How much power does this make? This car right now makes about... Uh, see, this is always coming. <laughs> Everything's a secret with this man. I don't even... A, he's like, oh, I agreed to do yeah. a car feature, but uh -huh. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. What are we shooting? Build Bio. You know, I don't think you've ever hosted an episode of Build Biology. Never watched one either. <laughs> <laughs> this whole show is about looking at people's cars. Too long. Comment below if you want a one minute version of Build Bio that we can put on Instagram for the likes of you and Hurt. That'd be pretty cool. So welcome back to Build Bio. And on today's episode, we are going to be looking into one of Donk Master's builds. For those of you who have not been following our Donk build, We've been getting a little bit into donk racing this year. What are we doing with it? You don't know about Scotto's 1300 horsepower donk? The cops are coming. The cops are definitely coming. Recently, we went up to Sacramento. Everyone's already seen Donk Masters Z06 donk. And if you didn't see it get, uh, Mopped up, Mopped baby. Up by Ken Block the other day. Make sure you go check that out. Spoiler mm. alert. No. So there's a bunch of different cars in the In-N-Out fleet. They actually refer to it as the Skittle Pack. It's all the cars that they have on their trailer. Today, we're gonna be looking into the Carolina Cantaloupe, which actually belongs to one of Sage's buddies. This one stood out to us because it has this crazy rear wheel setup. They actually made custom tires to be able to give it more traction. I mean, these are all 1,000 horsepower plus donks, and they're all probably sub 10 second cars. They're which, fast. Yeah, way faster than you would think mm -hmm. they are. All right, so today we got Sage, better known as the Dunk Master. Here we go. This right here is the Carolina Cantaloupe. This car is owned by my homeboy and partner, Country C, and it's a 73.5. There's no other one out here like this right here. The reason we call it 73.5 yeah, is well, because the front half is a 73 and the back is a 74. When he first got the car, he took it to a body shop that didn't know anything about dunks on pallets and thought they was all the same because it looked yeah, similar yeah, yeah. until we got the car at my shop and I like, why the header not on there? And he was like, it's a 74. He gave me the 74. I'm like, the fenders ain't no 74. So we had to modify and put a 73 front clip on the car. Because all donks basically are the same from here to yeah. here. Uh -huh. And then it changes back and forth. Yeah, way, it changes right? like a little bit as far as like the market lights on the bottom might be in a different right. place. Like on the 71, they didn't have all the molding at the bottom. They don't have this light. Mm -hmm. And then they would have the one in the back in the quarter panel. But the, the year is very little bit different from here from every year. So how did this car come about? Like, what was the idea behind it? Country C, uh, the rapper who actually owns the car, so mm -hmm. everything he has has, it has two C's in it. So his name is Country C, so he called this car Carolina Cantaloupe. That's why he called it CC. And that's one of his favorite fruits, so he came up with a scheme on making a cantaloupe that grows in Carolina. That's what he uh -huh. like. Yeah. And we did the car 2012, and it was in the, uh, the Don't Magazine in 2014. And then uh, we, did, we changed up the engine, big block, LS, we went Pro Charger, Turbo. So this was in Donk Mag? Donk uh, Rods. Yep, Donk Magazine, all yeah. over the website. And, That's the uh, magazine yeah. I used to work for. Uh, you know you everybody on top of Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> ain't popping the hood, not popping the hood. Not popping the hood. I think the hood legs broke anyway, but yeah, we, yeah. we're not messing uh, I hope you fix that. Nah, <laughs> we were talking about the tires. Nine inch lip, custom made Rucci rims on here. It's actually a 26 by 15 rim, but the tire is actually 16 and a half inches wide. So that, that tire did not exist. You couldn't actually make that fitment no. because the biggest tire in the market's a 305. Yeah, for, for a 26. 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you go about that? How did that all come about? How to go about this right here, I had to make a couple phone calls and I had to pass customs and everything like that and get the mold made. But I had a company out of Texas that makes tires and stuff. And then, then that's how we get introduced to the people who actually make it and got a mold made. And then once we got the mold made, we had to make a certain amount of sets. We got this. This is a 405 23 26. This is the first in the world on any kind of vehicle of that size. 
everything on it is called one-off. You know what I mean? Right. I, I can call NASA. I can call, you know what I mean, Boeing. I got connections in a lot of hot places to make these cars move the way they do. You know what I'm saying? Just so in case you missed that, he uh-huh. just dropped NASA and uh-huh. Boeing. I'm just, just, just. Oh yeah, something light. You know, <laughs> something light. I ain't talking about the Sultan and all other people in Dubai and stuff like that. <laughs> and another thing, as far as the design of the wheel, you know, country C, he's from the country. I'm from the country. We used to raise chicken and roosters and stuff like that. <laughs> so if you look at this wheel, this is actually a foot off a rooster with a spur on the back. You know what I mean? Like Gamecocks and all that. So that's his favorite football team. So I integrated that into the wheel design. And Rucci helped me design that. I'll see awesome wheels. And I would never have guessed that. Oh, yeah. So this is actually. But now that you pointed out, I can't not see it. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the car. I'm going to show y'all a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit now. The frame in the back is the ladder bar system in the back. We had the back half of the car. Move the shocks, ladder bar system. So like a back yep. in the day, old school race car. Mm-hmm. So we actually learned that a half inch stud from ARP can't stand a chance because of the metal that's made out of. So they have powdered metal, then they have hardened steel metal, then they have hip metal, and then they got stuff like Nessa used. That's <laughs> not quality metal <laughs> that don't break a bend that can go in and out of space. You know what I'm saying? What style axles is a Ford 9? Yeah, this is a four nine inch. It got big forward ends, 40 spline axles on here. Uh-huh. But you have to have the heat treated 40 spline axles once you're running over 1500 horsepower. Because if you don't, it'll push them and break them and they're not worth it. You're going to tell us what gearing is in here or is that a secret? I don't know what kind of gearing it is. Yeah. I just know the rotation you know of the mass. Yeah. So the transmission is an FTI. It's a level six transmission that we developed. It's actually like they have a level five that's about a 2,000 horsepower transmission, manual vibe body, aftermarket case, all that kind of stuff. But this is what they call a level six transmission. So it gets like a 300 millimeter input share, billet input share. The clutch package is a lot different on it. And the converter is something to like a lockout converter, okay. but it's a little bit different. So it's like a 12 inch converter, but it's made specifically. And that's like a custom it. thing that you've had. Oh, it's all the way, totally custom. You know what I mean? It's billet front plate, you know what I mean? Billet rear plate, it's all the way different. What did, what did you learn doing that along the way? Because I'm assuming you just started by putting whatever behind it. Yeah, I, I started by putting turbo 400s in it because of the first gears, the 148 ratio first gear. Mm-hmm. But when you have a gear that hard, it's, you're not going to stick with no 25 series tire. So by changing the gearing up and playing with the converter to actually make it slip. So actually the stuff that we're doing, we're using the converter as a slip converter mm-hmm. to make the stuff hook up. But you still got to have your gear and everything else right to make it do that. How much power does this make? This car right now makes about... Uh, see, this is always coming. <laughs> Everything's a secret with this man. I don't even... This a, he's like, oh, I agreed to do yeah. a car feature, but I'm uh, not going to tell you anything about I, it. You know, <laughs> it, it makes over 1,200. I'm going to tell you that. Over 1,200? To the wheel. So it makes over 1,200 wheel wheel horsepower. Over 1,200? Under 1,500? I don't know. I know it makes over 1,200. <laughs> Brakes, I see you got some Willwoods behind here. Yep. Fronts are just kind of standard package. You run like the drag race style setups yep. in the and rear. That, yeah, Does that stop race. this thing? Oh yeah, it's stopping. You know what I mean? We get the, the only thing we did that's a little bit different is make the brake lines a different size. And then we change the bore on the brake You just run a bigger stuff. master yeah, on Yeah, yeah. You run a bigger bore, mess, well, a smaller bore for more pressure and stuff like that. Yeah. So like I said, a lot of times it's a lot of tricks that I did that I developed specifically for these big wheel racing because we didn't know. Like a lot of times you run through the quarter mile, 150 mile, 160 mile an hour, you stumble on the brakes and the tire, it, the, you know what I mean, it'll kill them. Like you're not about to stop. Like you look at some of the old footage of g Dog had a GoPro, you can see the spark shooting from the brakes because of what it's doing. But now you see they're they stopping a lot better. Mm-hmm. And that's something we learned over the years. Like, you know what I mean? Like I say, I can go to Boeing and get airplane brake material <laughs> and stick on there. That's what, what I got. You know what I'm saying? Like my brake pads are made like the airplane brake stuff. Oh, the brakes don't work. You got chutes. You got yeah, two of them. Yeah, oh, How yeah, often listen, have you actually had to use the These chute? we have not actually opened on this car. But on my car, I did it a lot of times. Y'all seen on the TV mm-hmm. show, I open the chutes on. Mostly everybody have a chance to. <laughs> Shoot to tell them back <laughs> off, gaps off. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. to be real, like y'all ain't fast enough. 
try again. So that's like the new version of just hitting the, you know, you remember you hit, hit the, the brake lights, yeah, hitting yeah. the hazards to give them the brake lights. Over the pressure, over the pressure. Is, what's the, what is this weighing at? Park? Forty-five, forty. Yeah. So we use monster truck stuff a lot of times. Let's just open up the interior. And we'll just talk through that a little bit. I see you got shifter in the center. This is a, well, it's just a B&M shifter, but we just changed the shifter mechanism. I just like this style of shifter. Yeah. Is it a manual drive? No, uh, it's man a reverse manual vibe body, yep. Reverse manual yeah, vibe body. Yeah, this is so reverse manual a shifter. Trans yeah. You got the Rucci steering wheel. Yep. You got a custom center console, seats, mm -hmm. nitrous outlet in the yep. back. You got air conditioning? Not this one. We took it all. We had it though. We did have it at one point in time. You guys live in South Carolina. Yeah, you don't no, have no, air no. conditioning. It's risky now. <laughs> I noticed it's a vert, but you guys have the top just like buttoned down, right? So oh, he, yeah. just, he never opens it. Nah, not no more because like in a don't. A lot of people don't realize. And what I know when I have done a good pass is when you go 150 miles per hour, the head of boat bends up and it lets a lot of air in <laughs> at a high rate of speed. So if you in there like me, and when you hit 150 and ain't nobody with you. The whole top balloons on the car. So I, when it started doing that, it kept bending the head of both so it would never seal again. So now once we put a roll cage in it, we just made some clips to hold it down in the middle. So what's the story behind that? Because that actually looks like it's a track legal cage now. Oh yeah, this is a, a section eight point cage that's in this car. We did it for safety reasons because we're going so fast now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These cars are running under 10 seconds now. You know what I mean? People seeing them, they still think they're slow. They ain't slow. So we keeping the, the safety of it. And plus, I got five kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I drive all these cars. I got a lot of stuff to do. I want to be safe. You know what I mean? So we do start integrating the road cage into them and seat belts and safety equipment. Because you were telling me before about NDRA. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the NDRA is something that we developed as a team over a couple of years. It's called National Dunk Racing Association. And by the resources I have in the NHRA, NASCAR, and stuff like that, they took notice to it because of how well we sell out the racetracks and the race facilities. So a lot of the smaller facilities, we've been packing them out all over the United States for some years. And then the bigger ones started requesting it. But once they figured out how fast the cars went, they're like, man, y'all had to make some kind of sanctioned body racing because we can't let y'all come here and race at Bristol or Ohio, you know what I mean? Some of the bigger name brand tracks. And I actually sat down with the NHRA, some of the people, and then we came up with a rule book. So we got to actually change the rules because in the NHRA, in the rule book, it says no rim and tire combination over 24 inches. No tire over 24 inches mm -hmm. is mandated to run on the track. So I told them this is the rule we need to change. And they said, no problem. Show us some safety stuff and they can do it. I showed them some time slips of how fast these things go. And they're like, damn, you go that fast? I'm like, hell yeah. Are you going to show us some time huh? slips? No, 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 no. We're not going to get So I guess now you could just pop the hood and we could talk about that. Nah, I ain't about the hood. But I can tell you about this nice Tierra grill on the front of this. You what know about what's, what's behind the grill that looks this? like an intercooler with some like, really is that orange know. piping? What know. you got in there? I don't know. <laughs> what, what is that? So Don Mass has <laughs> promised us that after the next few races, he's going to send us some footage under the hood. Yeah. But right now he's got some top secret stuff in there that he's got to win a few races yeah, with. Yeah. So we're not going to see it today, yeah, not today. But by the time you're watching this, you'll see it. Is there one turbo, two turbos? We got one big old turbo. One big we turbo. Got, you can see a little bit of the turbo. It's like a garbage truck size yeah, turbo. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's actually off of a train or something. Yeah, a train? Uh, something I like figured that. it was off a spaceship. Yeah, something right. like that. We got turbo LS base motor. That's all we got. A little small block with a big ass turbo. He won't even show me under the hood <laughs> off the camera because he knows we're building one, so he ain't showing yeah. us see anything. Sure, none of that. You can't see that. <laughs> How much of this stuff is stuff that you've custom designed? Because I know you work with FTI, you mm -hmm. built your own. Yeah, transmission so, with them, converter, yeah. right, everything. Transmission converter with them, and then I do the the dry shafts. That's, and that's another thing that's that's a real thing. You have to use the uh, eighteen wheeler dry shafts or the dump truck dry shafts. <laughs> or really just go for a drawn over mandrel dry shaft is what you want. Probably like three inch, three and a half inch diameter, and the thickness of the metal is what you were going to need. Plus an input shaft on the transmission, FTI cell, a billet input shafts, and stuff like that. So let me ask you a question. Someone comes into your shop in and out and says. Mm -hmm. Build me this car. What does that cost? Something like this right here. Ballpark, yeah. This one is about one hundred fifty thousand. 
for something like this right here. But you know what I mean? If you want something with the interior stuff is a little different, you can kind of change up. But as far as like a drivetrain, you got about 80,000 in the drivetrain. Yeah, but it's a guarantee to make a number. I guarantee you how fast it'll go. And I guarantee the durability of it if you don't mess with the settings or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I set the boost level at one peak, and you put the right gas in it, you know what I mean? We, we what, what do you guys run? You run a pump e, gas? No, we run 85. 85, yeah, We run 85 on these. What do you think is the most important part about making a dunk fast or just any big wheel car? It's a, it's a couple of different things. It's a, you know what I mean? You can have the horsepower, but if you don't got a converter, then you ain't got nothing. But if you got a converter and horsepower, if you don't got no shocks, uh, no suspension, then you ain't got nothing. But if you ain't got the gearing, then you ain't got nothing. But if you run the turbos, you don't know how to work no boost controllers and no fuel maps, then you ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? So it's a whole combination of what you have to do. You know what I mean? They're just like cooking. If you grill a chicken, you put no salt and pepper on it, it ain't taste nothing. But if you add salt and pepper barbecue sauce, then you bang it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it just, what you, however you want to put the package together. You can hate on dunks all you want. You can be close-minded all you want. But whether you like it or not, they're fast. Real they, fast. They put a lot of time and a lot of energy into them. And some people, like Donk Master and In-N-Out Customs, make them fast. All right? Donks are cool. Cars are cool. Donks are cars. So they're cool. <laughs> Behind the camera. Oh, my God. There you go. Rucci, get your coochie. That's fire. <laughs> yeah, when I do a bra, they just sit there in the middle. It's good for the camera. That shit's been long as a ball bearing right there. That's all I like. Everything's like that.